This is Jeffrey Pettit, and today I'll be presenting my team's work on creating a hierarchical planner for resource allocation and emergency response systems. The goal when managing an emergency response system is to minimize the response times to emergency incidents occurring in an urban area using the limited resources available to responders. This is challenging because of uncertainty in the spatial temporal distribution of the incidents they're responding to, and because urban environments are dynamic and non-stationary. So decision algorithms need to adapt to the environment as it evolves. Proactively managing such a system requires an integrated pipeline of components to sense the environment, detect incidents, predict future incidents, allocate the responders, and dispatch responders to incidents. In this paper, our focus is on the responder allocation problem, which is how to dynamically rebalance the spatial distribution of responders to account for both shifts in incident distribution over time and coverage gaps, which can occur as responders become busy attending to incidents. The figure in the lower right demonstrates how a coverage gap can occur. Responder R2 is dispatched to incident I since it is the nearest. But this leaves no responder near downtown Nashville, an incident hotspot. The idea is to move the available responders like R1 to account for this gap while R2 is busy. It's important to note that in practice, dispatchers usually must send the closest responder to an incident due to legal constraints, which can lead to gaps like in this example. A natural mathematical framework for modeling control problems with inherent uncertainty is the Markov decision process, in which a decision agent attempts to minimize its long-term cost while interacting with an uncertain environment. Here, our environment captures the state of responders and incidents as they evolve over time while our decision agent can reallocate responders in order to minimize long-term response times. It's important to note that this is actually a semi-Markov process, since it evolves in continuous time and transitions are not memoryless. One approach to solve these problems is to find a policy, which is a general mapping from environmental states to actions. Reinforcement learning and dynamic programming fall in this category, and both have been applied to resource allocation problems. A barrier to using such methods is that even when using approximate techniques, it can take a long time to learn a policy. Since urban environments are constantly evolving, the policy may be out of date by the time it's learned. They are also not resilient to failures, as events such as a responder breaking down require a new policy to be learned. Rather than learning a general policy offline, our approach is to instead perform online computation to evaluate potential actions for a given state using generative environmental models. This focuses computation on one relevant state and can adapt to environmental changes by updating the underlying generative models. An example of such an approach is Monte Carlo Tree Search, a heuristic planning algorithm which efficiently builds a decision tree in real time by balancing exploration and exploitation. MCTS has been applied to several online planning problems such as autonomous driving. Since MCTS builds a decision tree online, it's challenging to scale it to realistic scenarios due to their computational complexity. For example, in a city with just 20 responders and 30 waiting locations, which we refer to as depots, there are on the order of 10 to the 25 possible allocations to decide between at each decision epoch. A problem of this size is not tractable to solve in real time. Our approach to scale up MCTS is hierarchical planning. The idea is to split the urban area into regions and then solve the planning problem separately for each region. This significantly reduces the overall complexity. If we split the earlier example into five evenly sized subproblems, it reduces the complexity by 22 orders of magnitude. This allows us to attractively solve the problem using MCTS. One challenge when doing this is to determine how to assign responders to each region, since real regions are heterogeneous. For example, in this region segmentation of Nashville, the blue region covers the downtown area and sees more incidents than the other regions, and should be assigned more responders accordingly. To address this, we model each region as a queue, where incidents are generated at some rate given by our prediction models and enter a queue to be serviced by ambulances represented as servers. Using the MMCQ wait time equation shown here, we can approximate the expected incident response times for a region based on the number of ambulances assigned to it. We can then solve an optimization problem that minimizes the sum of expected response times over each region based on the number of responders assigned to the regions. Putting this together gives us a hierarchical approach for dynamic responder allocation. After dispatching causes a coverage gap or a shift in incident distribution is predicted, a high-level planner first determines how many responders should be allocated to each region and which responders to move if the allocations have changed. Then a low-level planner is invoked for each region, which uses MCTS to determine where exactly the assigned responder should be located within that region. This dynamic allocation procedure is repeated each time a relevant environmental update is detected, 
such as a coverage gap or an ambulance failure. To evaluate the proposed dynamic allocation framework, we compare it to a baseline policy which emulates static responder allocations used today. Our first set of experiments uses stationary incident rates based on historical means. The second introduces synthetic incident rate spikes to capture how incident distributions change based on events such as rush hour traffic. The third introduces responder failures to test each method's resiliency. We perform our experiments on a simulation of Nashville, Tennessee's response system using data from the Nashville Fire Department. We evaluate the system on three different region segmentations with five, six, and seven regions generated using k-means clustering. In our stationary experiments, we only evaluate the low-level planner, since there are no shifts in instant distribution that would cause the high-level planner to change the region allocations. We found that dynamic allocation reduced response times by 7.5 seconds on average. Importantly, it also greatly reduced the variance in response times, meaning that there were far fewer incidents that had to wait a long time for a responder. The risk of negative outcomes exponentially increases with response delay, so reducing this variance can reduce instant mortality. In our non-stationary experiments, the average response times increase due to the synthetic incident rate spikes. Here, the low-level planner decreases mean response times by over 18 seconds compared to the baseline. In these experiments, we also introduce the high-level planner to account for incident distribution shifts. Adding the high-level region rebalancing improves mean response times an additional three seconds when compared to the low-level planner in isolation, which indicates that it helps the system adapt to these shifts. Next, we introduce ambulance failures to test each planning configuration's resilience. The baseline and low-level policies, shown here in red and yellow, are not able to cope well to these failures, and we see the response times increase significantly as the number of failures goes up. When the high-level planner is introduced, it can detect these failures and rebalance the responders accordingly, as shown in the figure in the top right. Here, an ambulance in the green region fails and the high-level planner detects that there are an insufficient number of responders assigned to the region to cover its expected demand. It then moves a responder from the orange region to the green region to balance the responder distribution. The high-level planning results, shown here in blue, demonstrate that it is able to maintain reasonable mean response times despite the failures, and is able to keep the response time variance low as well. Finally, I want to point out that our full dynamic allocation pipeline, using both the high and low level planners, took approximately 180 seconds on average to make an allocation decision. This is short enough to be practical for use with real world emergency responder systems. In conclusion, we have demonstrated that hierarchical planning can be used to scale decision theoretic models for use in real world resource allocation problems as splitting the spatial area into regions greatly reduces the overall computational complexity. In our pipeline, a high-level planner uses a queuing approximation to determine the distribution of resources to each region. Then, a low-level planner uses MCTS to determine the exact allocation within the region to maximize long-term utility. It is resilient to resource failures and can scale to large urban areas. Thank you very much for listening. Please feel free to send me any emails with questions or visit our project's website. Thank you.